Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about a couple things, a couple projects that I'm actually working on and why I haven't done one of these videos in a while. So a couple projects, well, one of the first projects that I'm actually working on currently or researching is an antenna tracking system. Now the antenna tracking system will work by GPS locations and there's stuff already in the market that does it. Some do it by the audio channel, some do it by the OSD information and some possibly do it in, a, in another way. Now, the, the, the one that I'm planning on doing is actually GPS coordinates through the audio channel, which is broadcasted via the VTX to save space and not add some sort of interference. Kind of like, a, you know, some of you might say you can add a 900 megahertz low lane transceiver, but then that could create uh, interference because some of my, my airplanes, some of my, my quads are running 900 megahertz uh, protocol or 900 megahertz uh, frequency. So I can get some sort of noise or interference. And that's very bad at long range, especially this is the only reason why I'm doing it is because I want long range. Now, what I'm planning on doing is actually pretty simple. It's going to take advantage of the AT tiny chip. It's a really tiny chip. It's basically like a mini Arduino. We can create a small PCB for it to have it stackable possibly. And what that'll do is it'll, it'll from, from the multi -view protocol, because everything's running the multi -view protocol, basically it'll utilize one of the UARTs on the flight controller, pull the GPS info and send it through the audio of your VTX, your audio input of your VTX, hoping that your VTX sends audio. Now that's going to be sent over the air. There's nothing else needed except that little AT tiny Arduino to do that. But we're also gonna need something else, which is we need to figure out a protocol that talks over FM so we can actually send the characters. You know, like the GPS coordinate is uh, you know, longitude 12, latitude 11, you know, but it's, they're pretty long numbers. So we're going to need some something that's already pre-made, like a protocol that we can actually use and uh, to be able to send those tones. And then on the other side, we're going to need to decode that tone in order to know what number it was and if there was a dot and if it was a negative or, you know, all these kinds of things. So uh, I don't know how fast this protocol is. It's called the Baudot code and it, it predates. It's like a telegraph system kind of this is the way that it was working. And uh, this is how they were sending information you know, in telegraphs and stuff. So that's, that's kind of the same thing we're doing. However, now when we go down to the antenna tracking side, the antenna tracking side will need a couple things. Obviously, it'll need the Arduino. It'll need um, it'll need a demodulation circuit, which is really simple. Just an IC, a couple of capacitors. I could pre-make those actually if if we had to, and you could make them yourself if you wanted to also. So we're gonna have to make a demodulation circuit in order for the Arduino to understand the audio tones that are coming in. And once it understands them, then what we can do is obviously uh, decode those tones and convert them into text. And once we convert them into text, uh, we can pull the GPS coordinates from the flying airplane or quadcopter. Once we do that, then what we need to do is figure out how far away we are from each other. And also we need to find something, we need to find something called the bearing or the heading angle. So we need to find out what location it is from, from the antenna tracker to the airplane. So the airplane is possibly flying southeast and we're pointing north currently. So we need to, the antenna tracker to point southeast in order to follow it. And, you know, I think if it updates every five seconds, it's good going to be good enough or even 10 seconds um hopefully we can fit all that data within you know five seconds the whole you know longitude and latitude uh being sent over now i don't know if i'm gonna have you know um you know for for i haven't gotten to that step but right now actually the more i'm thinking about it and the more i'm talking about it uh, I don't know about errors if we miss a number through the video for, from the FM. So if we missed one number, how is it going to confirm that we missed a number? Uh, so that's going to be a pretty interesting thing to code. Currently, I'm not on that stage just yet, but um, I want to make it smart kind of. And we're only going to be using just one axis. We're going to be turning right and left. Tilting up and down is for a later stage because... I don't want to complicate things just yet. We can leave the tilting up and down for RSSI. That would make things a little bit easier for us. It would actually be pretty nice. We can do that also. Um, but what I'm planning on doing is, you know, setting up. Also, we also gonna need some kind of something that rotates. So what we can use is use uh, something like the 3D printers. What are they called? Oh my God, I forgot what they're called. Servo? They're not servos. Uh, damn, I've actually forgot what the hell they're called. And I know what they are. Anyways. Uh, the things that you know 3d printers use to move everything and they're really cheap You can get really small cheap ones and I'll have them linked down below if you want to check those out Now the GPS that's going to be on the ground station is the most important It should have both a magnometer and a GPS. So it should also have a compass basically built in 
so we can know if where because you need to know where you're pointing whether it's north south east or west so we can be accurate almost all the time now you know this project shouldn't cost much you know i mean just in terms of the extra components that you're gonna need maybe a cheap tripod uh i'm gonna have to 3d print some things and design some things and just, you know, to have everything being turned, some kind of a power supply. It's not going to take much. A demodulation circuit, two Arduinos, uh, a GPS on the antenna tracker, and the... I don't want to say servo. I, I can't believe I forgot what the hell they're called. Anyways, uh, we're going to need... We're going to just need a couple things to get going. And um, I think it's going to make for a pretty interesting project. So that's one project I'm working on. Now, the Open Hardware F7 Dual Gyro Flight Controller Schematic... What's the status? And what's the status of the F4 with the OSD? Now, the F4 with the OSD is done. It's been somewhat tested, but the OSD is not working. But I haven't had time to actually go and debug it. And this is where you come in. And also, I do have, a, if you're also wondering about the ESC stress testing until they catch fire, this is where you come in also. So, I am in current need, really bad, of an assistant because I can't keep up. And you might say, well, what do you mean? They don't upload every day. Well, I, I would agree with you if YouTube doesn't really stick its foot up my ass, basically. I, I would totally do that. Uh, if I don't upload for, let's just say, a day or two with, or af over 30 hours, of, you know, after 30 hours, then my channel will get a hit. And every, I, don't know, I don't know if you've heard people complain about this, but yeah, if you don't upload every day within 24 hours, you're basically going to stop being suggested. Your views are going to drop out of the... That's it. And to build that back up to the current level, hopefully you can get it back to the current level it's been operating is will take like maybe a good week of two uploads per day and that, that's a shitload of uh, work to actually do so an assistant i'm actually looking for assistant and i'm actually looking for your support if you guys can support me and enable me to hire an assistant and now what is the assistant going to do well this is going to do actually quite a lot of things so this is where the assistant comes in now the assistant is going to be very useful because it will cut down time drastically for me and what do i mean by this for example obviously i'm gonna have to teach him a couple things i'm gonna have him set up you know my esc stress testing okay install this motor with this esc and then call me when you're done while I'm editing a video. Then I can jump back here and then I can do the test, take the data with me, tell them, okay, put the second ESC up and I can make shootouts really quick. And one day I can pump out a lot of shootouts because I can already start editing the video and putting everything together. And every information that comes, I just, you know, put it up and just make a little template so I can just easily import that data and make it really nice. And also after that, after I gain all this information, what I can also do, hey, listen, go to the website upload all this information let's make a template real quick and once we get a template done that's it every ESC tested you go and set all the information out there in a nice detailed manner for everybody to find this is what I want to do this was one of my goals but I just don't have time to do that so that's one thing also that's going to be really useful for everybody actually also another thing for example I can have him editing the video if it doesn't need much editing while he's editing I can be out working on a different DIY project or, and or the open hardware flight control. I really want to finish that actually. The open hardware F7 flight controller. Because I do have a couple ideas for a couple things. I've actually started working with TensorFlow. Which is, you know, deep learning or AI if you want to call it. It's not really AI. But machine learning, deep learning. Uh, I'm practicing on a couple things right now. And I really want to make videos about it also. But it just takes too much time to do that. And then I won't be able to do anything else. So I really want to make more time for me to pump out more things that I really want to pump out. But, you know, with all this, um, I have so many things to do. I feel so much inefficient than I should be with an assistant. I know with an assistant, I would be able to push out a lot more content, a lot more useful content and not half-assed content. Sometimes I feel like I half-ass some of the things I do, even though I work my ass off. But I just feel like oh, I could have pushed a little bit more. But fuck, I don't have time. I got to move on to the next thing. I got to move on to the next thing. I got to move on to the next thing. Keep pushing. So an assistant or two. <laughs> no, just one assistant right now. Uh, if you guys can help me get an assistant, that would be super awesome. And um, yeah, just, you know, pay taxes after him, insurance, whatever. Because, yeah, but yeah. Well, I mean, we can start part time first. That'll really help. So, yeah, a support, you know, goes a really long way. Just keep in mind, if you also can't support me on Patreon, you can also donate on PayPal if you wanted to. And uh, just, just remember to use the links if you just, you know, just don't have cash to pay, but you just like to purchase some things. So you can use the links on Banggood. You don't have to buy the same thing, but that also puts it in a couple cents here and there. And that all adds up. And then that really helps also. So if you keep that in mind and let me know what you guys think 
should I just basically shut up and just, you know, keep doing what the hell I'm doing? Or should I, or it's a great idea to actually get me an assistant because an assistant would actually help quite dramatically, actually quite dramatically. All right, so let's put that to the side. So the let's talk about the open hardware flight controller. And oh, by the way, comment along the video for every single thing that I talk about, and I want to hear your opinion. Now for, uh, yeah, let's start with the Doc King Furious FPV. I don't know where I placed it. Anyways, the Doc King Furious FPV. Now the Doc King Furious FPV, they said they're going to daisy chain it. Some people are saying that all oh, no, they're not going to be able to do that, but theoretically it should be possible. We can do, we can do actually like a hardware-based daisy chain in a way. Uh, which should be pretty interesting. But first thing I need to figure out is I need to figure out how they're passing both RSSIs down to the docking, whether it's over SPI or whether they're overriding a couple of the pins that are coming down, for example, like overriding one of the audio channels that are coming from the module and the not connected pin that's between the ground and the uh, VCC, which is like in the top three of them. So I haven't done that just yet, but I really want to get to it, but I got to finish a couple videos first. Um, so yeah, that's something also. Also, I started on this video yesterday. Now, this has got a lot of mixed reactions. You know, you got Stu's didn't work. You got, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's that guy's name? Andy, I think. Andy. Andy's didn't work. Uh, Kebab was in love for some reason. I don't know why he's the opposite of everybody. I don't remember what Bardwell said about this. I haven't flown it because my car is broke down or just in repair still. And you know, we still have snow outside. So I haven't flown this. But um, what I can see is, you know, from... What I think is going on to some people, uh, the execution of this is really nice, but there's some things that are big no-nos. 6S with such long battery leads, wires, has a tendency to introduce a lot of noise. Not only that, you have it sandwiched between your VTX and a Bluetooth module, okay? And um, <laughs> it's just, um, it's really nice. Like, every component on here is really nice, but... You know, there's some things that could be changed. For example, the battery lead, if the battery lead were to be changed slightly and I add a low ESR capacitor, the video feed noise, I think, would be absolutely gone. Okay? The ESC looks somewhat decent. But on 6S, you know, there's, the ESC still can't really handle 6S that well. There's only a few rare ones that do, and I actually have one, but I'm not allowed to show it just yet because it's, it's, it's pretty damn awesome, actually. So that one I can't show you guys just yet, but there's some ESCs that are going to be really great for 6S. So this ESC is using pretty good MOSFETs, 4-in-1 ESC MOSFETs. This is the Yishin HV, by the way, Yishin Wizard HV. I'll have a link down below. Check that out. That really supports the channel. Um, and we're also using pins to connect the ESC down to the flight controller. Now, it's good and it's bad. Some, you know, this has also mixed emotions, breaking, not breaking, but it also can act. Now, check this out. If you're having a spin of death on this, try to change it from D-shot to multi-shot and see if it'll go away. If it does go away then the D-shot signal has noise in it. And you might say, okay, what, the, what does it have to do with anything? Well, D-shot is digital. So if, you know, one thing doesn't look right, then it just ignores that whole packet. But once you receive enough packets, then that motor basically doesn't know what to do, and it shuts itself off, and then desync, you fall. Multi-shot is still analog, so it's just one piece of, you know, information. If that hits some noise, it might just make the motor work 2% harder or 2% lower, but it will not uh, ignore that most of that, you know, the data that's coming through. So uh, keep that in mind also. So if you're running into in desyncs, first thing to check if the motor is hot. If it is, then you might have a screw that's inside your, uh, in too far touching the coils, thus creating some sort of a short circuit inside the motor. But if that's not the case, then try to switch to multi-shot. I think that might help. But don't forget to calibrate, obviously. So if you don't know how to calibrate, just Google it. You'll figure it out. So yeah, just go to multi-shot if you're having issues with D-shot. Uh, I don't know if you could, if you lower the frequency, it'll make it a little bit better, like D-shot 150, D-shot 300. But if you, I think, you know, I'm actually, now I see why ProShot makes sense. But not a lot of people are talking about ProShot much. So I haven't really even tested it, really. Uh, I've seen it. I've seen the protocol on my oscilloscope, but I really didn't do much with it just yet. So maybe we can go and dig in deeper to this when I get an assistant. That'd be really nice because I could just sit here, play with this shit, and then I come back and report some crazy shit. Doesn't that sound awesome? That sounds just super amazing to me because that's what I really want to be doing. And um, yeah, well, I think that's it for now. I don't know, I need to get going on a couple things. I need to figure out that IC for the demodulation circuit for the FPV antenna tracker. Also have a couple AI things that I'm working on. 
not much, but I would like to put more time in because like I told you, I want to create the little baby AI system that will actually tune your quad for you. And it's really possible, like, like really possible. And um, also one that's going to fly my quad. And some other things also. Hmm. Possibly even AI, just a basic mini baby deep learning AI to kind of help with the antenna tracking part. That'd be pretty awesome. What it can do is it can actually see the video feed, analyze it somewhat, even pipe the, uh, it could actually take the, 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 long, the GPS location from both. We can take it from the audio as well as the, you know, the FM transmission and as well as the uh, GPS, you know, from the video feed. And it can actually kind of figure out that, oh, look at its altitude. Maybe I need to, you know, we could do all kinds of crazy things. All I got to do is just train it and just have some time. And that time is the key uh, word here, which is the, the, the very difficult thing to find. There's so many things I can do. It's just, it's, it's just, <clears throat> I just wish I just had more time or help, basically. And I would really love it if you guys could help me. You guys have done it before, and we've gone through many iterations. You guys helped me get my oscilloscope. You guys helped me get my testing set up, and then I've upgraded it, and I've done so many things. And I feel like it's time... I want. I really want to take it to the next level, but I'm just very constrained. And this is where I look for you. If you guys like this stuff, if you guys want to see more stuff, better stuff, more in-depth stuff, more real stuff, then it'd be super awesome if you could support me any sort of way. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll possibly see you in a couple hours. I'm not sure, uh, because I really want to get cracking on this FPV tracking system or antenna tracking system. And uh, because everything is really expensive, and um, I could get one if I wanted to, if I co contact a couple companies. But, you know, I don't think a lot of people actually, there's people who would buy it who are really serious about it, but it's really nice to, ha to learn this stuff also, you know, start learning about the FMD modulation. I've never done that before. And it's just, it's really exciting. It's something new. It's something different. And I have an in-depth video coming up for the FPV analog signal or the video analog signal. Um, I have been dissecting the whole protocol and trying to make it into a really nice video to just like give you the ultimate understanding of how the analog video signal actually works, you know, and show you what's really going on. What is this? You know, this is the color burst. This is the pre-equalization pulses. This is the synchronization pulses. Um, you know, you can calculate, you, you, by the way, just a nice little hint. NTSC is faster, but PAL has better resolution. Ah, 1000 TVL line is bullshit. Anything, I think, above 600 something is bullshit, basically. Uh, keep that in mind also. Now, it's not bullshit for the sensor, but it's bullshit for what you're going to see. You're going to always see, I think, 615 lines or 500 something lines for PAL and NTSC, depending. Obviously, PAL has more because PAL came in at a later later time than NTSC, so it worked out all the little kinks. Uh, but again, you have NTSC working at 29.97 frames per second. And why is that? It was actually working at 30 frames per second, but they had a little issue where they had to drop the frame rate in order to add a little bit more data in there to fix an issue with the color. This is where PAL came in, increased the line, but also decreased the... Uh, the frame rate to 25, but you also got uh, better quality. You got more lines in your video. Uh, so, yeah, just, just a fun little interesting fact there for you. I just have a lot more on this stuff. Uh, I've just been really obsessing about this because also with the FPV tracking system, the, the modulations and everything. So I'd really love to also make really nice, um, I don't know, how to, not how-to videos, just really technical, scientific, easy to digest videos where I just sit down, I narrate it, I show you pictures, not like just, you know, full blown in your face. I kind of want to just take it, just, you know, take it easy. And then, oh my God, I so wish to do that, but time. And well, let's leave it at that. I'll see you guys in the next one. Any support goes an absolute long way. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section, go off on me if you wanted to, or if you do support me. Awesome. And I really hope we can take it to the next level. So, well, that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.